What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel Detroit Poker. My name is Brian. Uh, I'm doing a video series on how to beat 1-2 No Limit Hold'em or at least where to start on your journey to crushing the 1-2. So that being said, if you have not seen episode number one you'd like to start at the beginning, I'll put a card right up here somewhere. And you can get started on episode one and come back to this one. Uh, this video is going to be about what I consider to be one of the most, if not the most important skill that you're going to need to master at the 1 2 level to advance and crush the games. So, we're going to go over a hand. Uh, this is an example of a situation to illustrate my point of this video. So, we are at a 1 2 no limit hold'em table at MGM Grand in Detroit. This is about three and a half years ago. And we are under the gun. We have $480 and we have black pocket jacks. We cut the raise first in to $12 and we pick up three callers, last of which is the big blind. So we're going off to this flop four ways and we are second in line. And the flop comes out nine of clubs, 10 of clubs, five of diamonds. So big blind checks the action over to us. Uh, definitely going to start with a bet here. So we place a bet for $30. And pretty quickly, uh, under the gun one announces raise and he bumps it up to 75. He's playing a uh, similar stack size to us. So if we call this 75, we're going to be playing almost $400 behind for the turn in the river. The action folds back to us pretty quickly. So at this point, we have three decisions. Obviously, uh, we can call, we can raise, or we can fold. If we call, we're going to play the rest of the hand out of position on pretty wet board, and there's not going to be a lot of favorable turn cards for us. So it's treacherous if we decide to call and call down. It might be the best course of action against someone who's known to bluff. If we think somebody's going to raise with draws or whatever, we can just we could we could re-raise here and just get the money in if we think that we have enough equity to get it in versus a naked flush draw or whatever but i mean that's another choice or we could just make a tight fold here and conserve chips and have an opportunity to get a better more clear spot in the future so out of those three choices what choice would you make in this spot you know, pause the video and think about what you would do in this spot against an unknown opponent. So hopefully by now you've already got an answer in your head or you've commented. And now I'm going to tell you what I did. So about three and a half years ago when I encountered this spot, uh, I pretty much snap folded pocket jacks. And I'm going to tell you why. At the 1-2 no limit hold'em level, um, unless you've seen proof that an opponent is capable of raising with worse than two pair. Two pair is the minimum hand that most one two players will raise and or get aggressive with. Now unless you've seen proof that they are capable of raising with less than that, and when I say proof, I mean you saw them show down a hand that they raised that was less than two pair. <laughs> Not a suspicion that they're bluffing, not this guy plays every hand, he can't have it every time. That's not good enough. Actual proof that this person is capable. You are going to assume that your opponents never raise with less than two pair and you're going to make this fold here every time. You might get bluffed 5 or 10% of the time in this spot. Somebody may bluff you here and there. But I would estimate 90% of the time or more, you're destroyed by two pair or a set in this exact spot. And if you just fold here, this could very well be the difference between winning $1 an hour and winning $15 an hour. Now, just for good measure, this gentleman was kind enough to show us his hand. And I did note it in my hand history. This guy was nice enough to show us pocket fives in the hole for bottom set <laughs> so we made a really good fold 
The only way we could win is backdoor straight, backdoor flush, or hit a jack. So the quicker you realize that your opponents don't bluff and they're scared to make aggressive actions and you start making folds like these, uh, the quicker you're going to move up and you're going to save money and your bankroll is going to continue to grow. But if you decide to make calls like these, then beware. Uh, it's a, it's a win rate killer. You cannot pay these people off. You just cannot pay them off. What people do in general at 1 2 is limp and call and call and call and call. Like if they had Queen Jack of Clubs here, even though we blocked that, I'm just using that as an example. If they had, let's say they had 7 8 of Clubs on this exact board and they were in position, they wouldn't raise you. 95% of 1-2 players would not even raise an open-ended straight flush draw in this spot. They would just call all the way to the river and hope that they hit. <laughs> They're just too passive. I'm sure that some people are going to slaughter me in the comments and say that I give the worst advice ever, but I've played at least 5,000 hours of 1-2, and I've lost a lot of money making calls like this. So I'm trying to save you the trouble and give you the information and the knowledge that I've gained over the years. But proceed however you want to proceed. I'm just trying to help you. So that being said, I uh, definitely hope you stop in and check out episode number three, which is going to be all about implied odds and set mining. So you definitely want to tune in for that one. And... If you like this video, drop me a like. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. Uh, drop me some comments. And if you don't want to miss uh, the rest of the videos in this series, you definitely want to consider subscribing to the channel. And click that little uh, bell and you'll get alerts when I upload a new video. So I will see you in the next one, guys.